<laughs> your kids, your, uh, you stop by, I guess this is your son uh, who returns home and he's sleeping overnight. I stopped by the bathroom and heard the water running and my son humming. It's kind of nice, you know. Came home, still loves his parents. Are you home, I shouted, rapping on the door. What do you think? Do you have towels? Don't I always? Did you lock the back door? Was it unlocked? What time do you leave tomorrow? Do you have to know tonight? You want to sleep in? What kind of question is that? Good night. It was wonderful to know I could still communicate with my kid. <laughs> We're in Stamford, Connecticut with Irma Bombeck, and we'll be back in just a moment. Well, we have a three-year-old that just started the whys. Why, 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 why? Every single thing that we see. Why is there a tree? Why is there a plant? What do we do? Put them under sedation. <laughs> I know. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You know, my, I just moved here from Illinois about a year ago, and my mother never calls me. I'm so jealous of your son. Oh, really? <laughs> She All never right. calls. Uh, get an answering machine. She will. Uh, sir. Yeah, when I Not was 16, I used to turn the headlights off on my car and cruise around late at night mm -hmm. so my mom wouldn't know what time I was getting in. And she always knew. She is knows. there like a radar that they have? Or yes, how does that it work? is. Yes. We have an extra set of eyes in the back of our head. We have all these impulses that go out. We know. I mean, don't think for a minute that we don't know. Even when you're not in the state or this country, we know. Are you there, caller? Hi. Hi. I'd like to welcome Irma to uh, New England to begin with, and then also... You know, the problem, the world went to hell when the women got, decided they wanted equality, and there went marriage, monogamy, and the young women today are going for the old, wealthy, powerful males. <laughs> and, and so the, uh, the males that they used to marry, you know, if you're 24, you used to marry somebody 24. Now you marry somebody 44. So the 24-year-old males are there without any women because they're all going for the rich guys, and that's why we have so, much, so many homosexuals. <laughs> Now, now we got it, Phil. Do I? Is, yeah. see, this is what this is what George Gilder is telling the world. And you that. did it. You did it. Tell me about it. Tell me you, how I did it. You left your older wife and married a young woman. And I didn't, though. That's precisely the problem. Well, you'll make you'll allow me to make this point here at the outset of our program. There was no difference in in ages. So so age was not a factor in, in whatever. In what and however uh, <laughs> Moi's life may have may have gone not as scheduled. Okay. But make your point, uh, the sociological point. The point, the point is that uh, men are essentially barbarians, and what they want is a harem. That's essentially That's our what fantasy, they want. Isn't it? Our fantasy is to have a harem. So if you have sexual liberation, what happens is men tend to get a harem. In Arab societies and some other societies, they actually have to keep all the wives they get. In American society, the powerful men can shuff off one wife at a time and uh, turn in the 40s and get 220s, uh -huh. and thus the powerful men can dominate yeah. the marriageable years, and the, the childbearing years of a series of young women. And the women's movement has contributed to this, you think? It certainly has, by, so, because the way the barbarians are turned into civilized men is by women saying no. And the chief accomplishment of the women's movement was to persuade women not to say no during their 20s. During not their precious 20s that they can never retrieve, women were sold to say yes to men, and it was a tragedy. This is George Gilder. His book is titled Men and Marriage. You may have noticed Mr. Gilder has received very few invitations to attend any now meetings that I know about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know, you were saying that we have to tame these young men. It's not my job to tame young men, and they are responsible for themselves. I'm not going to go around wasting my time looking, you know, to. But you're to wrong. Tame these it is your men. job. No, it's That's not. That's what you don't understand. <laughs> and when you don't understand that, you'll get exploited by a series of powerful uh, men. No, That's no, what'll I have happen. I a wonderful husband who is taking care of two three-year-olds right at this minute, Terrific. and it's, it's not pertinent at all. I just think it's baloney. I think the exploit men 
do not have the elaborate maternal sexuality that women have. Is and there? because uh, men cannot be sex objects, cannot bear children, which is the ultimate sex act, uh, they have to perform for women in order to connect themselves to the long time horizons of female sexuality. Yeah, the, that will be self-perpetuating too. The reason that the little boys aren't going to, you know, be maternal and mothering is because they have no, they have a father that's at work all day and all they have to look at is their mother. They have no which, good role which, model. Uh, you have twins? For, no, I don't, but I have a three-year-old and his father spends a lot of time with him and I also work so that I don't have to be home with, with the little boy all day long and my husband won't have any time to be with him. And you know, he won't have a good role model. And we'll be back in just a moment.